Hi friends, I hope you're having a lovely day today. Welcome back to another video slash episode of the James Red Podcast. Today I want to talk about creative motivation a little bit. I believe that we as creators deal with this problem that I like to call the motivation paradox. And it's this thing where our brains go, by the way, we have two brains, one in our head and one is just below the knee on the back. Our brains say, this brain goes, I want to create something meaningful and share it with the world. This brain goes, that sounds great, brain one. However, that sounds like work, and I don't really feel like it. I'm going to scroll through Twitter instead until I become depressed and die. So I believe that it's a good idea to build build a scaffolding of discipline around staying motivated, just like just like with many other things in life. There's a guy named Zig Ziglar, who is sadly no longer with us, but he was an author and motivational speaker. He said that people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. Tony Robbins, who you probably know who he is, pretty popular fellow. He's an author and life coach. He has this conference that is a six-day conference. It's called Date with Destiny, which, stop, is a fantastic name for like maybe like a Chinese jazz band. Also, it would if I ever had a boat, I would definitely name it Date with Destiny. But there's a Netflix documentary about this conference. So you can go see it without having to to pay the the sum of money that it takes to actually attend this conference. It is a fantastic documentary. I would encourage you guys to check it out. You will learn that at the beginning of this conference, and I think this repeats itself every day, people come into this room and there is this insane over-the-top energy that is built in the room. It's, pr it's produced to be in the room. You, you have lights everywhere. There's music. Everybody's dancing. He's, you know, Tony comes up. He's doing 32 backflips, half twists, lands. He's yelling at people. People are, there's fire. People are flying just because of motivation. The, uh, the, the people are hugging, punching each other in the face in like a motivating way. But there's this over-the-top energy, and this is because he understands that it is important to influence the emotions, and it's important to actively influence your emotions and have dominion over your emotions to motivate yourself. Now, I'm using this very practical, physical example to, uh, so that you can pull it back into your daily life and sort this out with whatever you're dealing with. It's important to build a, a dynamic structure for your motivation because what will happen is we're, we like to do this with our lives. This is the natural state for us. You have to put an effort to turn it around and go back this way. And this, this can mean any number of things, right? In terms of your feeling, your mood state, what you're actually creating, what you're, what I, I suppose what you're actually creating could kind of be like this because you can't negatively create. So the analogy part falls apart at some point. However, uh, in our lives in a general sense, we're doing this until we decide to do this. You have to put in the effort. Now, another thing that happens is, at this conference, which is amazing, is that people will stand up and say, Tony, I have a problem. Help me fix my life. And so they, they'll, they'll, they'll start with questions like, I don't like how I'm eating. I'd like to change my diet. And by the end of his short exchange with this person, everybody's crying in the entire room. He's talking to this person about how their father left them, their mom has cancer, their brother is on heroin, and, and they're trying to fill this void with, <laughs> in their souls with food. They're eating to feel better. So sometimes, you know, you have to, there, there, there are surface issues that you have to deal with in life. Sometimes there are much deeper issues. So if you're not feeling motivated, you have to be able to um, sort between the two. Now, I also think that uh, a lot of motivation happens outside of the act of creating. And I've spoken about this before, but washing dishes for me is something that is not inherently uh, motivational in it doesn't, it doesn't call out to me, let's put it that way. So I have to develop ways to want to engage in this. 
so I've, I've, uh, for one, I've, I've put forth effort to try to build, to, to try to, to make it where I forget what my hands are doing while I'm washing dishes. And the way that I do this is I find something that's absolutely intriguing to watch that makes me hope that there's more dishes, right? Now, I also think it's important that you're controlling your attitude. And this is something that I am not very good at. On a, <laughs> it's, it's, your attitude is sort of this overarching thing that you have to deal with on a daily basis. And it can be the hardest sometimes. And, it, I, and I, for me, it's almost like there's some sort of... I struggle with feeling the motivation to, to affect my attitude. Or why should I affect my attitude? I think a car almost hit a tree out there. But all of these things, you have to influence your attitude just like you influence your actions, right? You have you do have to choose to not run your car into a tree. Okay, why is attitude any different? I'm speaking to myself when I say this, by the way. <clears throat> so, it's important it's important to engage in all sorts of different activities that inherently motivate you. I think the one is getting outside, moving around exercising and the interesting thing about exercising is that it does not have to be this narrow but when we hear exercising we have a, a vision in our head of what that thing means i have come to learn water water is also good for motivation because it fuels your body and if your body does not feel good you will slowly you will slowly melt into a puddle of something other than than water probably that that yellow stuff that they bring on those doctor shows where they're like, this is what's in your body when you, when you eat too much pudding. Uh, where's that? At? So you have to exercise and exercising is normally presents itself as this pretty narrow thing where you have to go on a treadmill or you have to lift a thing or run. I've learned that for me, exercising can be a pretty dynamic thing. I'm not an expert at this. I certainly have a lot of work to do in this realm. However, I've learned that a couple of times a week at least. I have, if, if you look out this window over here, there is, there is an entire mountain range right there. I have plenty of opportunity to get on a real life up, upward treadmill to, to, to make myself feel better. And, there, and I went out yesterday with my, with my doggo. We climbed up a mountain and it was such a special experience. He got his exercise. I got my exercise. The first five minutes, I felt like I was dying, which reminds you viscerally that you must engage in t taking care of your body because it will only get worse. So you feel like you're dying for the first 10 minutes. Then you get to the top, and then, and then I felt... I felt so wonderful, just wandering around, just jumping on rocks and stuff. I felt so motivated to come back and engage in, in the other things of my life. And so this is what, I'm, this is what I mean when I'm saying that, you, that the, the, the things that motivate you in life are often found outside of the craft itself. We look inside the craft for inspiration. We're looking directly to inspire ourselves towards that craft Sometimes that is not the best route to feeling motivated. Sometimes you need a global motivation for yourself to engage in life. And so I think that's an important distinction to pay attention to. And so you need to be feeding both of those things. You need to directly inspire your craft, but you also, you also need to be globally inspiring yourself through, uh, through movement. And also social interaction is a is another fantastic example. I'm the kind of person who is an introvert. Therefore, I will spend eight days in a house, never feel the need to talk to another human being. Now, this is this can be problematic because for, for an extrovert, you spend 30 minutes and you know what you need. You need to go, you need to go to the coffee shop and talk with your friend and 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 you talk about boys. But for me, I don't, I don't need that at all, <laughs> directly. However, I do need it, but it doesn't present itself, right? So, okay, let me break that down. The, 
the problem that is presenting itself in your life doesn't always connect itself to the source of the problem. And it also doesn't always connect itself to a solution. You have to do that, that work yourself. So there's an importance in, in the, having the right kind of friends in your life to help you be motivated. Now, I've, I've figured out how to engage with people around me that are my type of people in a, in a way that I think a lot of people maybe don't. For, for me, I actually, like to have converse, I actually like to have creative conversations with people that I find interesting. Sometimes it's harder to find interesting people around me here. So that's why the internet is great. And, and, and I have and I plan to do more of sharing these conversations with you guys, having Skype conversations with people over in, uh, in, in Yakuternburg and like in Beaver, Kansas, and talking about things that are incredibly inspirational. I, I, I learn about their creative process. I learn about their viewpoints about things. I learn about how they approach things in maybe a better way than I do. All of this stuff feeds you. It feeds you in such a nourishing type of type of manner. Now, if you're wondering, okay, I can't find friends around me. How do I make friends? Well, my my uh, I, I will just say that your goal should be to bring as much value to another human being as possible. It's not hard for you to find interesting people. It's hard for you to figure out how to engage with those interesting people. Focus on being a good friend. And I think this is how you will probably make a couple of good friends. <clears throat> so motivation is found through discipline. Motivation is also found after you finish a project. After you uh, carry out the steps, the baby steps. The smallest little, this is why you have to break up projects into small pieces because brain two over here is like, that sounds like work. One way to get through that that struggle is to, and to mitigate the lack of motivation that you feel about taking on this entire uh, thing that's in front of you. You're trying to build a 747. Is you you go find you go find the little the little window that goes in the side here. You find the bolt. It's 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 baby steps, one at a time. This is incredible incredibly important. And when you feel the least amount of motivated and you need to get something done. Rely on baby steps. Break it down as small as possible. Don't feel like you have to take on the entire thing at once. Another thing is important is to not be scared to stop working on something. There's motivation and then there's momentum. The momentum is the thing that you generate through working. You feel, once you get into it, that you're making progress and that's good. And sometimes you don't need a break. But sometimes... This will actually make you, over time, in a very sinister way, it will make you feel unmotivated if you're not, if you're not tending to yourself and, and, and setting aside time every, you know, whatever it looks like for you, hour, 30 minutes, three hours. It's different for everyone. You're not setting aside time to take a moment and do something leisurely. And also your brain... I think there are quite a few studies out there about how your brain starts to, it has a limited capacity for focus on something. So you're going to start to overdrive your brain. And you don't always notice it when it's happening. That's, that's the important thing that you have to understand. So the idea is that by building a disciplinary structure for yourself to motivate yourself, you are building this motivation to do valuable things. And when you are in a, a peak motivated type of state, this will naturally make yourself think more creatively, build different connection points in your brains to different ways to solve problems, and it will make you push harder, right? It will make you, you you'll get to a place where you go, I've never, I've never, I'm, I've never made it to this point before in the creative process. This is a new place for me. I did something interesting there. I did something meaningful there. And it will actually help you create meaningful things to share with the world, which is the point. But that's it. 
I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye. And don't forget that um, if you're having trouble with your diet, it's because your parents don't love you.